Um, and then I'm also going to mute you all, except for uh, mute all on here. Where are you at, Roger? Unmute you. All right. Okay. So welcome to the Janus Movement Solutions Kettlebell Swing Seminar. Uh, we're going to cover a lot of things here um, that, are, that are pretty fun and important to us. One thing is, if you, um, if you have any questions as this goes along, um, hit the chat. You guys all know where your chat is at and chat it to me. Uh, we don't need to chat it to everyone because everyone might not be able to answer and the only two people are going to talk are Roger and myself. Uh, this is, uh, thank you again for coming and this is going to be intended for an intermediate, which it looks like the most of everybody here is. Um, we're going to focus on hard style and we know that there are other styles of kettlebell. Uh, we're not just, we're just not going to cover those here today. So every, everything that we're talking to is referring to the hard style technique. Um, the strong first standards are, are what we're going to base uh, the whole thing around in regard to your swing standards. So a lot of any basic questions you might have are going to be answered with that. So if you have questions, please don't, don't hesitate to ask no matter what you think it is, it's okay. Um, and beyond that, we're just going to get right into it. Roger's got a presentation, so I'm going to give the floor to him. Uh, we'll open it up for a little questions after each segment so we can hopefully answer those for you then. If you feel embarrassed to ask, um, don't just say, don't say my name and I'll automatically defer it to uh, Quinn is asking the question. Okay. I just know his style. Um, all right. So Roger, go ahead and take it away. I can do that. Hey, shit, it didn't work. Okay. Hold on. Perfect. Just like okay. we practiced. <laughs> All right, so as Jeremiah said, we're working with uh, intermediate technique. You guys should have some experience with swinging a kettlebell by now. Um, and I think everybody does, so I think we're good there. Um, so let me get this out of the way, stupid technology. So the first slide, uh, the first slide here is uh, to remind you that we're, we're coming into this process today uh, at the end, if you look all the way down to the right, you'll see that cognitive piece, um, which is where your kettlebell mechanics are going to come in. Um, that's what we're focusing on, but I, I put this up here to make sure that everybody understands. Um, if you're having problems with your swing technique, you need to address the other two things. Um, usually when you get into stuff like this, we, we, you know, it's really not covered. You really dive right into mechanics, which is what we're doing today. Uh, but I just want to, um, I want everyone to keep in mind that you've got to focus on mobility, um, you know, having your body able to go through the motions you need. Uh, you also need to make sure that you've got the control down uh, before you even get to the cognitive stuff. Because if you get down to drilling your mechanics, trying to understand how to improve your kettlebell skills, but you have shitty hips, then you're probably wasting your time. So uh, just keep that in mind. Uh, use this stuff as you can, as it becomes uh, necessary, but make sure you're, you're hitting to uh, those other two buckets first. So um, today we are focusing on mechanics. Um, we're gonna answer a few different questions. Uh, this is gonna be part one of two. So hopefully this is interesting enough to get everyone to come back a second time, we'll see. Uh, if not, it's Jeremiah's fault. Um, but what we're, we're going to focus on is a, a few basic things. Uh, this is really structured around some common errors we see. So the first one is using ideal levers. Um, are you using your back or are you using your hips? Um, also something to keep in mind because we do have a lot of coaches on. Um, I think everybody actually. Um, we, we need to keep in mind when we're teaching other people how to swing. Um, you, you need to be able to spot these things. So let's say even if you are uh, you're pretty good at using your hips. Um, your, your clients or people you're coaching may not be, so keep that in mind. But we want to go over uh, using ideal levers. Um, we're going to go over optimal force transfer. Uh, this is really about keeping your arms in contact with the body. This is probably the most intricate piece, um, so we'll spend a little bit of time on that. But it really is about um, adequate force generation and making sure that you uh, have enough time for that force to be translated into the kettlebell. Um, the third thing we're going to look at is ideal timing. Um, 
your swing should be broken down into phases. And if you don't have a distinguishable uh, phase in your swing, there are mechanical ramifications to that. It's not just about, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, it's not just about, you know, your swing looks a little different. If you don't have a separation in each of these phases, uh, you are losing power. Uh, and each of these different concepts can be demonstrated biomechanically. We're not going to do too much biomechanics, so don't worry about that. Um, but there is a reason why all of the all of the standards are in place. And again, we're focusing on the strong first standards. So uh, if you have any questions at this point, uh, don't ask them because I've got more explaining to do. Um, all right. So let's get into first your ideal levers. Um, we we came up with a swing guide, which we'll offer to everybody at the end if you're interested in that. Um, but some some basic analogies we use are the catapult and the bow. Uh, when you look at these two structures and these two shapes, how they work mechanically, it's going to give you an idea of, of how people are functioning, how you're functioning when you're doing your swing. So like a catapult, it has, you know, really rigid arms and transfers its weight in a slightly different way to a projectile than a bow does. Um, the analogy of the catapult is if you're, you're using this, this type of mechanical structure, you are moving your body, um, you're moving the kettlebell rather with rigid arms and you're primarily using your back. If you look at the swing guide, um, if you do decide you're interested in that, we draw lines to kind of illustrate that. But in, in this type of presentation, what we're really after, these are people who use their backs when they swing. Uh, their arms are really, really stiff, and they're not getting a lot of uh, adequate force transfer. And the way to spot these people, um, the, the two dead giveaways are as you're coming up into the first part of your swing, you're going to see your arm, uh, people are going to lift the kettlebell. You're going to see the arms separating from the body uh, before the hips are done extending. And don't worry, we'll get into all of those mechanics a little bit later. Uh, you're also going to see people who are really just gripping the shit out of the kettlebell. You know, white knuckled, super rigid. These are, these are those people. Um, this is also going to be evident by a sequence. You know, as you're going through the different biomechanics of each phase, you really want to get used to looking at what moves and when. And the sequence you're going to see in, in the catapult is you're going to see the arms lift. You're going to see the back. Um, you're going to see the back move. And then last, you're going to see either the hips and or the quads. These people tend to be really squatty when they swing. Uh, they're not really getting a good hip hinge. So you're, you're really looking for things uh, to be out of sequence. That's, that's the catapult construction. Then when you look at the bow, um, what you're really looking at is elasticity, and this is what we prefer. Um, this has an emphasis on really, really powerful hips that are in effect launching the kettlebell forward. So the, the way to spot these people, uh, your hips are gonna finish extending, meaning you're gonna stand up completely straight in the lockout before the kettlebell even begins to move forward. Okay, this is probably the single most frequent mistake I see with people at lots of levels. There are people who um, are strong for certified and as hard as they've worked, you know, I'll watch them do their swings and the kettlebell is already lifting. You're losing power that way. So we, we really want to focus on, on the, uh, the, the hips, you know, uh, forcefully extending and finishing um, before the kettlebell moves forward and the proper sequence there, which again, we're going to, um, we'll go over when we do the timing drill is going to be the hips are going to come forward and extend. So someone's going to be um, almost completely upright. You're going to see the quads lock out the knees. And once the force from the hips and the quads has done its job um, powering your body, you're going to start to see the arms lift. That's going to be the last thing you're going to see. Uh, before I move on to this, does anybody have a question? on this slide. And again, the, the guide is going to make a lot of this stuff clear, especially if you're a visual learner. You know, we took pictures and drew like little red lines and shit. It looks great. Anything? Give me a thumbs up, Jeremiah, if there are no. Okay. Uh, so, you know, as he mentioned, we're, we're, we're training hard style. And the, the big difference between hard style is power generation. There are other styles, uh, but they tend to focus on endurance and um, elasticity as opposed to power generation. So we want to keep that in mind that this, this next bit is really about making sure that we are um, generating enough force and we're harnessing all of that force and bringing it into the kettlebell. If we're not, we are not doing hard style kettlebell training, which is cool. Just make sure you know what it is you're doing. Um, as we're really focusing on power, we want to make sure that we're synchronizing our movements properly. We're staying as tight as possible. 
um, you know, we're going to get into the next concept, which is keeping your arm in contact with the body. Uh, we want to stay as tight as possible. So the force you generate with your hips ends up into the kettlebell rather than every place else. Okay. Um, now to really help us illustrate these things, um, we're going to come up, we're going to go over some basic biomechanical principles. Now, a lot of times we as coaches will tell people that this is the way it should be. Well, why do you keep your arms in contact with your body? And usually your trainer answers are gonna, you know, you're gonna mumble something about safety and, you know, your spine's gonna explode and you're gonna go over a bunch of nonsense and you really have no fucking clue why you're doing what you're doing. Um, I wanted to pull out some basic biomechanical principles so you can actually explain why that you can actually do math, which we're not gonna do by the way, because I don't understand all those squiggles and weird letters. Um, but there is actual math that, that you can do to determine that you are in fact losing power. Um, no questions there because we're elaborating in the next slides. Um, all right, so the first one is probably the most complicated, but it's really not complicated, so don't let it scare you. Um, the idea is the impulse momentum relationship. An impulse, just really simply stated, is a force that provides momentum, okay? In our case, the momentum is gonna be forward and up, um, that impulse is what is propelling the kettlebell forward, okay? So when, when we're looking at impulse, there are two factors, okay? This is, again, this is where the math comes in, which we won't do. Uh, you need to take the force, so the amount of force generated by the body, you need to multiply that by the time that, that force contacts the body, okay? So what we're really isolating here is the impulse uh, is force, uh, force multiplied by time. We need to look uh, at both of those things. So when you're, you're, you're evaluating your own swing or when you're evaluating someone else's swing, you need to ask yourself, okay, how much force are we, are we dealing with? Do we have adequate force? It looks like we do. Let's say you're coaching somebody, their hip drive is great, their sequencing's right, uh, but they're not, quite, they're not quite getting a lot of transfer. We need to ask the second question is how long is that force applied? Um, which is where things will break down. So you're, you're looking at the concept now of follow through, which is common in sports and athletics. Uh, the example in the slide is a baseball. So when you're swinging a baseball bat, you wanna swing through the bat or through the ball rather. You don't wanna just hit the ball and stop swinging. Um, you swing through the ball because the longer the bat is in contact with the ball, the more force that's gonna be transferred into the ball. Okay. It seems like a, a, pretty, a pretty commonsensical kind of self-explanatory thing, yet I still see people all the time not really following through in their movements. Again, we're, we're just trying to tighten some things up here. Okay. Now for us, our follow-through works a little bit differently, um, and that, that is in our arm-to-body contact. And defined quite simply, uh, it is the point, uh, the point of contact between your arms and your rib cage. So when you're starting your kettlebell swing, you're down in your hike pass, you're standing up forcefully, you're hinging, you're doing all the right things. Uh, you want to make sure that your arms are still in contact with the rib cage. Usually um, it's somewhere around the wrist to the triceps, depends on your, your individual dimensions. You will get a little bit of contact down at the hips as well, uh, which is also important. Um, but I don't usually see problems there. Usually it's the arms floating up. So that arm to body contact is really just making sure that the force of the hip, uh, the hip hinge and the knee drive is getting into the kettlebell, okay? Um, if we don't have that contact, we're violating uh, this impulse momentum relationship where we're not maximizing it, okay? If the kettlebell is starting to float before your hips are done producing force, then we've ignored the time requirement there, okay? So we, we are short, uh, we're shorting one part of that equation and the actual force uh, that we're putting into the kettlebell is less, okay? And again, going back to the idea, this is about power. Uh, we want to make sure that we, we have adequate power transfer. That power transfer is largely going to be done with that arm-to-body contact. If you don't have it, you're leaving stuff on the table. Um, there's a lot of other kind of tricky stuff that happens on the way down that if we, we have time and interest, we might get into. Uh, but for the most part, we're really focusing on the way up. Um, so sh long story short, make sure you're, you're generating adequate force, but make sure you have the time in contact to transfer it. Uh, any questions on that? Nope, we're good? Cool. So the next one is uh, a basic principle of biomechanical analysis. It's just the, the principle of maximum force. And if you, if you want to generate maximum force, you should utilize all of the different joints that are involved in a movement. 
So one of the first things we learn in a uh, kettlebell swing usually is don't use your knees. Okay? It's not a squat, it's a hinge. And you hear it over and over and over and over and over again. Uh, it's absolutely correct. Okay? It, it is a hip dominant pattern. Um, there are some variations that are a little squatty, but we're, we're not covering those again. We're going into hard style. So um, we hear a lot that it is a hip hinge pattern. So we want to make sure that we're really ex uh, extending the hip. But what tends to happen is we forget the quads. We forget that the quads are anchoring, um, are helping to anchor our, us into the ground. And we forget that if we, if we, we have to bend the knees, we have to stand up. And if you're not maximizing your knee drive, uh, think about jumping without putting your feet into the ground. A kettlebell swing is very frequently compared to a jump. If you're not using your knees and you're not locking out those quads hard, you're missing a lot of power, you're missing a lot of efficiency. And that, this, you know, that this isn't just about swings, this goes into cleans, this goes into snatches, any of your kettlebell ballistics. So uh, the, the principle of maximum force basically just says use your quads, okay? A lot of people don't. Um, it's, it's a pretty common mistake and people are really missing out on a lot of, uh, a lot of power. Any questions on that? Pretty straightforward? Good? Okay. Um, next, we're going to get into the principle of maximum velocity. Uh, similar, similar biomechanical principle. They're both uh, categorized under principles of, of maximum effort. And this basically says use your biggest joints first. Okay, this gets into sequencing. Okay, when we we've we've got our arm to body contact and you know we're we're transferring power into the bell, but we we can't we can't keep our eye we can't take our eyes off of uh, our swing or the person swing we're coaching. So we want to make sure that the hip is moving before the knee. It's a bigger joint. There are stronger muscles attached to it. Um, you know, obviously we're not. You know, we've already talked about the back. We're not swinging through there. So when you're observing, you want to make sure that the back or the, the hips rather are coming forward or extending first. And as the hips, uh, as the hips are moving, then you can add a little bit of the, the quads. Um, you know, I don't want to get too much into when exactly that should happen because it's going to be different on, on people. You know, you've got different limb length and that might get a little tricky. Uh, but what you're really looking for, uh, and we'll get into timing a little bit, what you're really looking for is are the hips coming forward? And once those hips are coming forward, are you establishing a knee drive? Just make sure you've got proper sequencing there. That's all, that's the, that's the last one of these principles. That's really all we're focusing on for these first three. Um, any questions on that one? Okay, so now we're gonna get into, we're getting to uh, get into the timing. These things, um, these are the things you're looking for when you're actually coaching somebody. You want to make sure you have a proper sequence because if something's out of sequence, again, we're violating some of those rules. We're not generating maximum force. Um, and then you do get into injury potential as well, which is not cool. So first thing we want to see is your hips have to snap forward. Um, your hips are coming forward. It is a hinge. It is a forceful hip extension. And as a result of your hips coming forward, because your sacrum is buried in your pelvis, um, and those motions are moving your pelvis, you, you have to see the spine move, okay? Um, if you can bring your hips forward without the spine moving, then you're going to a very explosive um, spinal flexion, which is probably going to um, make your insides fall out. So don't do that. Make sure that you know, you're, you're allowing the, the back is gonna start to move at that point, but it's not going to move first, okay? Um, the sacrum is gonna move first, and then you'll start to see the movement come up from the base all the way to the top, uh, and, and eventually you'll see the T-spine move. Uh, the second thing you're gonna look at is your quads are gonna contract, okay? They are anchoring you into the ground, you're increasing that force. So hips, then quads. Um, as a result of those two movements, you're gonna see um, your spine finish. So what I'm really looking for is the shoulder blades. Um, and I cue you to the shoulder blades just because at that point, um, that's the last thing you should see finish. You shouldn't, you shouldn't see the, the shoulder blades move first. If you do, that's a telltale sign that you've got that whole catapult construction and someone's using their back. So the shoulder blades are gonna hit the wall behind you. That wall is imaginary, just to be clear. That's what the little quotation marks are for. So if you're slamming yourself into a wall doing your swing, it's not my fucking fault. Um, just make sure that you're, you're rigid and you're not, you're not hyperextending your back because that's also garbage. Uh, the fourth thing is uh, that you're gonna see is once you are standing up straight, your arms and your back are going to transfer um, the power to your arms. And by back, I just mean um, we want to make sure that we have scapular control. The upper back is not letting the kettlebell float too far forward because that's going to rob, rob us of power to 
Um, at that point, the arms are going to raise up. Okay, um, that's when you should start to see your bell float, not before then. Okay, um, then we need to see the bell float. If we don't see the bell float, according to strong first standards, we don't even have a kettlebell swing. So there's that. Uh, but you also need to consider if you can't make that bell float, you probably haven't generated enough power from your hips. Um, and or uh, the bell might be too heavy for you. You know, I've seen people doing, you know, uh, they walk up and they, they see the biggest kettlebell in the gym, like, oh, let me swing this. And it's like, it goes, you know, exactly two inches, like, oh, yeah, that's hard. Like, yeah, uh, it's, it's, uh, that was great. So we want to make sure that the bell can float. If it can't, um, you can't handle it. So it's probably a good indicator that you just need to back off and wait and, and pick something that's a little more manageable. Um, after that, after the float, you're gonna pull the bell down. You're gonna bring it back towards your second hinge. So the first one is gonna bring the bell up. The second hinge is gonna be the, the hinge that actually catches uh, the kettlebell. Um, at that point, as you're pulling the bell back down into your body, you're going to feel your arms make contact again with your rib cage. Okay, again, it's gonna be somewhere between your forearm and your tricep. Don't start your hinge until you feel your arms on your body, okay? If you do, you are not, uh, again, there's some other biomechanical mumbo jumbo that you're missing out on. Um, but um, to sum up, you're really just not, um, you're really not transferring force properly. And there is a little bit of, uh, there really is a little bit of injury prevention there. So on the way back, you're gonna make sure you maintain contact between your arms and your body. Um, and you know, the last thing is it should be obvious what, what phase of the swing you're in. If someone is taking a bunch of uh, stills of your swing, you should be able to pull out uh, a snapshot of each of these different phases. It should be obvious. Um, they shouldn't blend one into the other. Um, any questions on that one? Okay. Um, so when we, we get into, you know, just to, to sum up some of these, these three common things that we're going over, uh, when you're looking at either your, your, uh, your own swing or someone else's, we're, we're really looking at what is your, your lever construction? Are you the catapult or are you the bow? Are you using your, uh, your, your, your arms and your back to lift the kettlebell or are you using your hips to swing the, and, and, uh, propel the kettlebell forward? Okay. That, that's your lever issue. The second thing we're looking for is that the kettlebell separating before um, before the hips are done extending. Okay, that's a, a force transfer issue. That is that's where a lot of your power loss is going to come in. And then the the last thing you're looking for is is phases of the swing not really being distinct one from the other. Um, another common thing I see, especially with with people who are more athletic, is they do these tiny little swings and they never stand all the way up. Okay. Uh, they're at the top and their arms are here and their necks are all cranked. And it's like they're trying to do seven swings per second. And they're, they're you know, they, they look great and they're all sweaty, but um, they're, they're not really honoring the movements. They're not really, um, they're not getting adequate power. They're not really training anything other than um, some endurance and probably a whole lot of forearms. Um, so we want to make sure that each, each phase is distinct and um, you can separate one from the other. Okay. And that's just kind of a summary of, of the, the, the first three things that we're seeing. Again, we've got part two, and we're going to go over some other issues. Um, any questions on that? Okay. Uh, Jeremiah is going to take you through the timing drill in a second, but um, I want to go over this checklist. As you're, as you're coaching, these are some common things that you're going to see. Um, so if, you're, if you're, you see someone down in the hike, uh, the hike position, if you see their hips raise before the kettlebell uh, starts to move, or if you see the hips raise before the hips start to come forward, that has to be done with their knees, okay? They're starting to straighten their legs, and that's a violation of our, our principle of maximum velocity, okay? Again, now we're starting to take these principles and apply them. Um, you're losing power. You're, you're probably putting yourself in a position where your glutes aren't really in a good position to move anymore. You're probably going to finish out your swing with your back and maybe your quads. Um, probably not the best way to go. Okay. Um, do the shoulder blades move before the back, uh, or do the shoulder blades move before the pelvis comes forward? So if you see that spot right in between your shoulders start to lift, if you see, if you start to see the back of the head lift powerfully, probably a sign that someone is really focusing on their arms and on the top of the movement. Uh, with people I coach, it's very common where I just tell them to forget about your hands and focus on your hips, and a lot of the stuff just cleans up. Okay. But they're, they're, you, you have a kettlebell in your hands, it's heavy, you want to swing it, they're thinking about that kettlebell and they're trying to lift it. 
So make sure the, the, sh the shoulder blades aren't moving up first, because if you do, you, you have a lever problem. Um, do the arms lift before the hips finish? That goes back to the arm to body contact. So if you, if you see someone in the process of standing up, but that kettlebell is already starting to rise, you have not adequately extended your hips and they have not expressed all of the power, all of the force that they can generate. Um, so we wanna watch that. Do the quads contribute? Um, again, a lot of times they don't. Uh, people are just doing a hinge and it looks kind of floppy and lazy. They're really missing a lot of power there. Um, does the spine begin, move, or end, uh, or and end as a unit? So you do want to see the sacrum end of the spine move first. You don't want to see the, the shoulder blades move, but it, it should move as one piece. And you should start to see the lower spine start to move forward before the upper spine does. Uh, pretty important. If you don't see that sequencing, um, or if you see uh, flexion or extension during, during the swing, you've got some problems. Again, you're losing some force and there, there may be some, some injury stuff. Um, do you see a straight line at the top? Okay, this, this goes back to our speed swingers. You know, a lot of them are standing up, but they're still sitting down. They look like they're flexed. Their shoulders are rounded forward. Everything's super tight. Um, we want to make sure that we've got that straight line at the top. It is part of your, your pauses are part of the timing. So make sure, uh, excuse me, make sure that you're taking those and make sure that you, you're, you're nice and tight at the top. Um, do the arms contact the body before you begin the second hinge? Okay, that's force production and it's safety. Um, and the last, the last thing that I see a lot is, is the hinge excessive. So when you're setting up in your swing, your shoulders should be above your hips and your hips should be above your knees. Yes, it's a hip hinge pattern, but if you are bending over, folding in half, looking like you're praying to some strange metal God, you're doing something wrong, okay? If you're about to slam your forehead on the ground, your hinge is excessive, okay? Most people are good with about 45 degrees. So remember to keep the, the hips above, or the shoulders above the hips, the hips above the knees, you're not folding in half, okay? If you think that doing a good kettlebell swing means that you can fold completely in half, you're wrong and you're wasting your time, okay? You're wasting your effort, you're exposing yourself to injury. Um, if that's what you wanna do for a particular reason, that's cool, again, we're limiting this to, to hard style technique. Um, so in certain, in certain kettlebell circles, maybe that's cool. I don't know what people do. Um, but again, this is, this is what we do and this is what we teach. Any questions on that? Okay. So the last thing, you know, I'm going to say, and then Jeremiah is going to actually take you through this is, um, kettlebell swings are not a two beat exercise. Okay. If you look at a beginner doing a kettlebell swing, they, and, and maybe Jeremiah, you can, you can stand up and demonstrate this, um, but people will, will do everything all at once, okay? So they will stand up, they will stand up, and they will start, uh, so go ahead and get into your hike with your arms back, okay? Arms back through your, th through your legs, like you're reaching for your birth canal. I just want to mute myself so you can hear me, so. Okay. So yeah, go ahead and reach the arms back. So what people will do is they'll stand up and the arms will immediately raise. So he'll come up with one and he'll come down with two. Okay, so if you look at like uh, Jillian Michael swing or if you look at a lot of the fitness personalities, uh, forget about reaching back through your legs and flexing your spine. Uh, but what they teach is a two beat swing, okay? Um, this, is, this is not allowing uh, this is not allowing adequate force transfer. It's not allowing um, you to really maximize each phase of the movement. So what we want to see is either a four beat. Uh, we think of it as six beat because we really think that the pauses at the bottom at the top are that important. But for instructional purposes, um, it's a lot easier to go one, two, three, four than it is one, two, three, four, five, six. So uh, what we're really looking for uh, is a four, a four part sequence. And this is what we're going to practice unloaded. So the, the first thing we're gonna do is the hips are gonna snap forward, okay? So go ahead, there's one. Now, as a consequence of the hips snapping forward, the arms are gonna raise and come up to the float position, okay? So notice how he's nice and stiff. Um, his arms are out and floating, okay? That's two. Now the arms are gonna start to return to the body, okay? So as his arms come down, he's not gonna go into his hinge. You can see how tight his arms are to his body. He's not going back down into a second hinge until his arms are settled at his sides. And then now you're gonna go down into your second hinge. You're gonna absorb that force and create enough force for your second, um, your, your second hinge 
uh, in your next repetition. So that's four. So going through again, uh, first position, second position, third position, fourth position. And I'm probably done talking. Um, Jeremiah is going to go ahead and do the rest. Go ahead and take your pants off and get started. Okay. All right, everybody. That's not what you tuned in for. Uh, so hold on. That's let me, let me stop evening. sharing my screen so you guys can see. All right. Well, that's this evening Zoom, and you'll have to message me for that invite. Um, but everybody, this is the time where we can start moving a little bit. So go ahead and stand up. Um, ultimately, we would like to see kind of what you're doing. So if you're able to position the 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 um, the camera down into where you can see. I know we all film those Instagram videos for whatever. So it's sort of like that position. And um, if you aren't able to do this, Carrie, I see you're not able to do it. I understand. Um, just take note and kind of just kind of see what goes on here. First thing we're going to do together and I, is we're all going to do the one, two, three, four. Okay. So keep in mind that we're going to do it in kind of a slower speed right now, just so you can get the beats. But no, once you begin your kettlebell swing, it's not going to be so one, two, three, four. It's going to happen a little bit quicker. Okay. So everybody root yourself into the ground as if you're going to do your swing. Bill, go ahead and turn to the sides. Okay, Katie, no worries. Um, there we go. And if uh, I can't see all of your body, that's okay. Uh, just kind of take a look. I'm not going to watch the whole time. As long as you can see all of mine, that's going to be important for now. So remember, this is practice. Kettlebell is practice. It's not just get out there, let's do this exercise like um, so many people we've seen and Roger mentioned them where it's just as many reps as they can with no full, full movement. So everybody, we're going to zoom into the, into the hike position. So go ahead and, and hinge at those hips. We're going to pretend like we're already reaching back in our hike. So the hands are going to be shooting back between your legs as if you have that kettlebell getting re ready to propel it forward. So once everybody's in this position, we're going to go ahead and count with me. So the first one, and I want you to do this like you would as if it's a kettlebell swing. Mind that you need to use those quads like Roger emphasized in the slides. So it's going to be one, two. We got our float right here. Don't forget the float. Arms are straight. Then you're pulling it back down three, and then we absorb four. Okay. Any questions? All right. I can't hear you anyway. So if you no, have any good. questions, okay, cool. All right. So everybody, let's go through that three times straight. Get a kind of get the kind of vibe going. We'll do a little bit of fast and loose, and then we'll actually hold a kettlebell on and, and see what, what your stuff looks like. Okay. So assume the, the height. Okay. Ready? And with me in three, two, one, two, float, three, four, one, two, float, three, four, one, two, float, three, four. Okay? Everybody feel good? Any, any questions? All right. So if you've done strong first, you know. The fast and loose is just like that jiggly stuff. This is Roger's move. Uh, if, you, if you want him to do it, he'll do it. Um, but just get loose real quick. So when we do these swings, I'm going to demonstrate five swings for us right quick. But when we do these swings, we're going to do them in a ladder style. Since we aren't trying to train uh, the endurance aspect to this, and we want to train more so the skill and make sure that we have all the pieces and the power, we're going to do it a ladder style. So a ladder style, if you aren't familiar, are one rep. We're going to park the bell, shake it out, reapproach, and we're going to hit two reps, park the bell, then three, four, and five, okay? Um, if you need extra rest in this, take a little extra rest. Let's try to keep up if you can, though. Um, Roger and I will watch and see how this works. If you don't have a bell, at least practice your timing. Try to, try to at least practice the timing drill we just did. Because remember, that's going to be one of the most important keys is the timing, okay? All right, so I'm gonna go first. I'm gonna just do five swings and hopefully they're good enough for, for your standards.
that might have been six or seven. <laughs> I don't count very well. So, all right. So that hopefully I nailed it. Oh, seven. Okay, perfect. <laughs> um, that was like the first one. Like I had to kind of get into it, you know. Um, but well, technically it was the rest five up. because the first two didn't float enough. Yeah, I know. That's why I did the extra one because I was like, oh, this isn't even floating. Roger can't count this. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and follow it like this. So listen for me. I'm going to say hands on the bell, and that's when you're going to grab your kettlebell. I'm going to say swing, and you're going to swing, and then you're going to put your bell down, and you're going to shake it out. Now, in our there's many, many screens, so I'm not going to give immediate feedback right away. However, nice job, Kawan. I like the shoe technique. However, um, we will kind of try and break out as best as we can after this. Okay. All right. All right. Ready, everybody? Hands on bell. Swing. Good. Stand up. Shake it out. All right. I'm seeing some things. Swing, yeah. All right. Well, I'm going uh, I'm to unmute some some of our our uh, people here Jana. so we can. Okay. We need to unmute Jana. All right. Participants. Jana. Unmute. All right. Let's hear it. Skip, Jana. I just what skipped it. I, was, I thought you were going to say like one, two, three, four, and then you said swing, and then I looked up, and then I missed it. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, so it's so a refresh. I was too it's hands on bell. <laughs> it's hands on bell. Swing. Now, when we do two, you're gonna do two swings. I'm not gonna say hands on bell swing and then wait for you and swing. So you're gonna do two swings sequentially. Okay, okay. make sense? Got if it. you need me to, if you need me to show you what that looks like, wave your hand at the camera like a crazy person. Okay, so far so good. All right, ready? Hands on bell. I'll wait for Quinn. Feeling good. All right. Quinn, go ahead and drop your hips a little bit. Thank you. Pull the bell a little closer. Okay. All right. Ready? Swing. Okay. All right. I see Jana smiling. I think she 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 sees something in herself. Was it two? Uh, it was two. Uh, okay. That's yeah, it. Was two. I didn't count. Um, I'm not a good counter. Remember. All right. So. <laughs> no trainer. All no. right. So remember, I'm gonna point this. I'm gonna point this out really quick. Um, remember the one of the main things that we want to that we want to. I muted you, Jana. I don't want to hear you anymore. Um, uh, one of the main things that we got to focus on and think about this when we do the three is really drive those quads okay now you're, you're standing tall the line is rigid you want to be upright so some of you i see you're here you get up and we're just here you feel like you're tall but if you really engage those quads you, and and get that that drive from the hip you're going to get to tall and and look we're looking straight ahead okay we're not we're not looking down okay so Use those quads on this next one. We're going three, okay? Ready? Hands on the bell. Can I make a quick suggestion before we get started? Yep, they can hang out there. Um, actually, I want everyone to stand up into your float position, and I want you to point your arms, okay? I want you to look down your arms, almost like it's a sight, and I want you to put that kettlebell in that spot, okay? That's how you know you're getting tall, and that's how you know you're getting the float. So make sure as you come up, you're pointing that kettlebell at whatever that target is. That's all. And remember the shoulder blades. Hit the wall. Okay. Hands on the bell. Looks like Quinn's upping his bell. He's feeling it. I like that. All right. And we're going three. Okay. Ready? Swing. All right, how's, that, how's everybody feeling? Give me two thumbs up if you're feeling good. All right, just one thumb, okay, two thumbs, okay, good. All right, okay, Kiwana, so I see you're improvising, I like that. Um, what I want you to do is- <laughs> Water bottle. But is, I always, I okay. noticed that like, 
my neck, the issue is I always do this. I keep my head here. So I, I do that with yeah, my so clients. Just relax. Just chill. Just chill. It's not it was your head. But what I want you to focus on is I'll, you don't even need the water bottle for this. Go ahead and mimic the swings just like we did with the timing. Uh -huh. um, but I want you to focus on really contracting those quads and uh, contracting the glutes at that top to get that drive, okay? okay. Focus on those quads. It, it looks like your legs could get a little bit more uh, tension in them, all right? Uh, oh, okay. Derek, I just see his logo. So he's either doing nothing or he left. He's, um, got, a, he's got a weird view. He's having I'm watching. Oh, okay. So cool. Um, all right, so we're on four. Everybody, back to your bells. Oh, Quinn has lost some clothing. Oh, okay, this is getting, this is getting PG thirteen. All right, all right, hands on the bell. All right, everybody's in and four go. Cool. How are you looking, Roger? You see anything you want to point out right at this time? Um, I'm seeing a couple. I'm seeing a couple um, hinges that are a bit too deep. Um, so right now, Kawana, you're a bit deep. So go back down to the the bottom. If you look, if you look at her setup, no, go back to where you were. Don't adjust it. <laughs> if you if you <laughs> look at if you look at her setup, um, right now she's better, but her shoulder was dropping below the hip. Queen, you had you had a little bit of that going on as well. Um, it, it really just comes down to the muscles and where they can pick up leverage. If your shoulders drop down below your hips, um, you're, you're really, you're really using up all of your available hip, ex uh, hip flexion. You're not going to be able to get hip extension right away. The only way you're going to really be able to get into hip extension is to bring the back up first. And then, so imagine this is your head here and this is your, your butt. If you're here, Okay. Even if, especially if your shoulders are lower, you can't bring that hip forward until those muscles pick up leverage. Okay. They can't pick up leverage until you're here. So the only way you're going to get from this position to this position is to either a use your quads and you're going to have a squatty swing or B what most people do is they're going to use their neck. They're going to use their back and then they're going to get here and then their hips are going to come forward. So they're not going to have a they're not going to have a complete swing. What's up, Quinn? Unmute him. Okay, hold on. I can unmute myself, you guys. Oh, okay, they, thank you, because yeah, <laughs> you almost maybe unmute Christian, and he looks like he's into something. Um, for that positioning, is it better to stop? Are you aiming for ninety degree angle for your hinge, or are you aiming no. for a little less? Mo most people are good with about forty five. Okay, that's what you were talking about earlier then. Okay. Yes. Um, okay. It, it's, look, Quinn, it's going to be, it's going to be different. You know, we, we have different levers and we've got, uh, mm -hmm. you know, different limb lengths. So, you know, you, you, you want to find a spot that is deep enough to get enough force, but not so deep. You know, if you, if you calculate work, if you're, if you're actually, you know, calculating mathematically how much work you're doing, you know, it's going to be the force, but there's also going to be a distance uh, there's going to be a distance quality and you, you need yeah. to maintain that force over a greater distance. So if your hip is starting here, okay. Yep. Yeah. And you can generate adequate power. You are doing less work than if you're starting here. Mm -hmm. So if you're, if you're looking at, you know, performance standards, if you're looking at, you know, endurance, maybe, um, then maybe you want to do more work, but if you're really looking to just generate power from a realistic position, or if you're looking to do a certain amount of repetitions in a particular time, you don't want to exaggerate that hinge because you are literally doing more at a 90 degree hinge than you would at a 45 degree hinge. So, you know, it really is about context and, and understanding um, how to match the position to the particular goal. Make sense? Makes sense. Thank you. So yeah, yeah. Play with it and just see, see what feels good. Um, okay. See what feels good. But again, you don't, you don't need to do, uh, the 90 degrees and you also have to consider background so i know you're ridiculously bendy um re just remember this is the part of your practice that is making you less bendy so you're more well-rounded so yeah. uh, keep that in mind and and um before i jenna made a comment but before i grab to that real quick quinn um one thing that in in light of that because you are very bendy as roger puts it and it's true based on your last instagram post 
Um, thanks. <laughs> you're here. Well, you're here because you have so much flexibility in those in those hamstrings. Your swing is a little bit more straight leg when you're in this bottom part. What I would mm -hmm. like for you to do is when you drive that hinge back, let that knee kind of bend a little bit, load those glutes a little more. Now you don't have to be like a squat per se, but to where when you when you get more in your high position, when I said drop those hips, that's essentially where you're going to be at the bottom of your swing when you come back down, as opposed to just getting here, bring it into that position right there. So now as you drive through, your glutes are doing the work and it gives you an opportunity to bring those quads into the picture a little bit more as opposed to there, okay? Okay. And yeah. uh, Jana, uh, you wanted to contribute, go ahead and unmute yourself. Quinn, mute yourself. Thank you, Jana, go ahead. Uh, um, I was saying like the, whenever you're talking about maximal force, it's just, you have to concentrate on not losing integrity of the levers. So thinking about all the levers that you're having to use to create the force and then you, you're finding the place. And that's where Roger was saying, like anatomically, we're all different and we have those different lengths. So there is like a point that you're going to have maximal force, but with integrity of levers. Yep. And you're just, unfortunately, you just have to play with it and figure yeah. it out. I mean, there, there are probably some really smart yeah. math people. Um, who can figure that out for you? I'm not one of them. So no. just try a bunch of shit. <laughs> Nor am I. We can't even count. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Like, look. Much less right, do so math. That's why I love. <laughs> I know, right? So just remember with kettlebell, um, it is practice, right? If it's 10 reps and you do 12 and you feel good, then you feel good. If it's six and you're like, yeah, I feel good. I don't want to do more. I don't want to do more. The point being is taking the moment and you know, doing just like, like we, we do here is go ahead and set up that camera, video your swing, give yourself an opportunity to break it down and see where you're at in those phases. Because if you don't know what it looks like, then somebody like myself or Roger or, or um, Phil, who's also a strong first survey coach, are going to see it and be like, oh, there's opportunity for improvement here. Or if, if it's Roger, he might say that's garbage. Um, I, I would say take the time when you do these kettlebells to evaluate it. You don't have to post it to anywhere. If you want to share it with one of us, feel free. You know, it takes a second to look at, at it, but you can even see with yourself with going back to what Roger mentioned, as far as you should be able to see at each point in a still photo, what part of the swing you're at. Okay. So if your hike is the same, every time you're driving with the force, you're up tall, it should be like that, but practice it, okay, guys? And we're at five, so don't get too comfortable. Let's finish off these five, and um, and then uh, we're we're gonna we're we're gonna see if we have any questions, and uh, and we'll talk a little about about what's coming up next, okay? All right. So, real quick, Quinn, you see where you're at right there, okay? You see that? Now, when you're going to do that drive up, you'll feel that it's going to be significantly different than what you had been replicating in the three other reps last time. Um, one thing to note, as we're all here, some of you have been coached by either Roger or I before, and some have not. Remember that with the swing, it's, it's not your – if you're looking here down at the ground, you're going to end up with that further hinge over. So in the strong first, the standard is – the eyes are going to be on the horizon. And if you're curious about what the standards are, um, we'll, we'll kind of wrap up and you can, you can send something in the chat and we'll send you the, the swing standards. Uh, but our eyes are at the horizon, so we see where we're going. So ultimately, when we come up, we're already in a higher position as opposed to being in this position. When we come up, now we're in that neck tight position, Kwana, that you were talking about. And I see uh, some people doing it as well right now. Um, but if you're already in a line of horizon, you don't have to be cranking it up, but you can, you can be looking just right at the horizon. You stand up, you're going to get better hip extension, and you're going to be able to see where that bell's going. Target it, okay? All right, you guys ready? Hands on the bell. Drop your hips, Jenna. And, yeah, there you go. And then when you when you got this position right here, make sure your lats are engaged and you're ready to hike the kettlebell. You're not just willy nillying it. This isn't a feather. It's a it's a heavyweight bell. Hey, stay in there. Don't you worry. You should be comfortable here. This is easy work. Okay. 
Ready? We got five, okay? Lock and loaded and swing. Definitely there's some improvements oh. looking better. Yeah, Quinn, yours snapped up right away. Very nice. Um, everybody's looking better. Uh, so let's take a vote. You guys want to do another ladder or would you guys like to string about 10 swings together? So if you want to do another ladder, one thumbs up. If you want to do 10 swings together, two thumbs up. 10 swings, 10 swings, ladder, 10 swings, either way. Okay, it looks like the votes are going towards 10 swings. Carrie, if you just want to do a ladder, I don't know what you're swinging with. I know you've been <laughs> she's out of commission not. for a little bit. Okay. I was like, she's well, just, I'm impressed. She's participating screw, in the democracy. Yeah, screw the doctor's orders. Okay. Um, all right, so let's do 10 swings on this one. So how we're going to do this is we're going to do this in three sets, okay? So we're going to do 10. When you finish the 10 swings, I want you to only think about your swings in the swings. Don't think about the rest. When you finish the rest, get your fast and loose on. Okay, and I will call it hands on bell, and then we'll swing again. Okay, we'll get the heart rate up a little bit. Try to focus on one thing that we've talked about that you feel like you might need some improvement, okay? All right, and we'll just kind of see, and, uh, and we'll, we'll see what we get out of this, okay? All right, everybody ready? Hands on the bell. Wait for everybody here. As soon as, as soon as Derek gets ready, we'll be ready. Okay, go ahead and swing. Boom. Good job. Fast and loose, everybody. Fast and loose, feel good. Thor, I'm recording this, so anything silly, we'll uh, we'll just we'll just post for your for your likings, okay? All right, Kawana's changed her background. Don't hit your head <laughs> on the counter, okay? Unless that's virtual. So Kawana, remember, still for you, practice creating this. That's good. Practice creating those strong quads at the top, okay? I want you to think to be as tall as you can possibly be, okay? All right, everybody, hands on the belt. Swing. So a quick, uh, a quick uh, coaching tip. You can tell how people are doing with the movement based on where their eyes are. Um, it's very common for people to look down when they're focusing. So don't worry if, you're, if you've got people who are looking down a little bit when they're doing their swings, they're probably trying to figure it out. That being said, once they've figured it out, make sure the eyes are up. Um, the second thing, and this might be helpful for you, Kawana, um, you should, you should pick a spot if you're having a hard time, especially with neck position, pick spots uh, throughout the entire swing where you're going to look. So, you know, you start down in your hike pass. That's your first position. So you're, gonna, you're not going to be looking straight down at the kettlebell, okay? Um, the kettlebell is a, an exercise in maximal ballistic hip extension. Your eyes, when you look down, are going to trigger a flexion response. So if you're looking straight down, your eyes are already fighting against you. So you're going to pick a spot that's maybe 10, 15 feet in front of you on the floor, okay? And then you're going to, you're going to stand up, and then you're going to do the sighting thing that I told you about before along your arms, and you're going to pick that spot. So your eyes are going to go back and forth between those two spots throughout your swing. And go, through, go slowly through that and let your neck learn where you need to be because you're still, you know, if, you're, if your eyes are down, you're firing, you're telling your brain you want to you wanna flex, but the exercise is, is making you extend and you're fighting against yourself. And that's probably some of why you got that neck tightness. So pick your spots um, and just rehearse, practice it. Eventually it'll feel less weird.
Yeah, I haven't been, I have not been using the kettlebell as much usually, you know, on my own lately, of course. But I did say that I'm going to, I've been wanting to come and take part in this. Um, so I'm going to go get my kettlebell from the gym and bring it home so I can really do it because I've really been wanting to work on it. I wanted to be a part of this because I really wanted to get it right. So thank you. I really need really help on it. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the name of the game is just practice. Okay. So it's, it's regardless of, of where you're at, if you're, you know, we're all at least intermediate uh, swingers here, um, regardless if you're certified through strong first or get about the athletics. All right, Quinn, no big deal. Have a good session. I'll see you tomorrow. Um, if you're interested in some May stuff, uh, Quinn's doing a workshop tomorrow. I'm going to check it out. Uh, but if you, if you, um, if you, if you take it in the aspect of practice, no matter how good you are, even the last time we did the kettlebell club, um, it was pointed out to me some things that I was doing, like where my hips were raising and disconnecting in my, in my height. So I was not focusing on the power there. So as I go back to my practice, that's what I worked on for a little bit. So like, that's something I've seen out of you, Phil. So just kind of lock in on the bottom on that and then try not to let those hips come up before, before they drive forward. Okay. But it's all practice. And that's why you videotape yourself, not to get likes, but to get right. All right, I just came up with that. You like that shit? All right, feel me. All right, we still got one more set. So everybody, let's do this last set and then we'll uh, talk about what's next. All right, hands on the bell. Swing. Good. Nice job, Susie. Those look really solid. All right. So I see a few things individually. I think Roger probably, Roger probably sees a few things individually. Um, check it out. We're going to do part two. This is a two-parter. We're going to do part two next week. Hopefully you all can join us. I think we're looking at Thursday at two. Um, there isn't a huge number of you who made it to this part one. Um, just the, You guys are just the important ones. So we'll kind of touch base and uh, see – Try to coordinate best at work. If it's two o'clock, it's great. You know, I hope you all can make it. But in the meantime, what we need you guys to do is we need you guys to practice these swings. All right. Uh, did you know the kettlebell swing is an exercise you can do every day? Who knew that? Raise your hand. I did. All right. Okay. So what does that mean? Try to do some swings every day. You don't have to do a million of them. Maybe hit a ladder. I hope you everybody's at least doing some sort of workout every day. Um, if you're on a program that prohibits swings and this was your only chance to do it, then you're probably on the wrong program. Um, and we can help you with that too. Uh, but ultimately, we'd like for you guys to practice this. Now in that practice, go ahead and pick a time or two throughout this week and videotape that practice. Now we offer this up to nearly everybody uh, that we coach in our, in our kettlebell club that we do in person or wherever. Uh, and, and some people take advantage of it, some people don't the video, send it to us. Now that, that you received this invite from, you can send it right there. Um, or, you know, we can send a, I'll send you our, our Janus Movement Solutions email too. It doesn't matter. But send it, get some coaching, some feedback. Ask for some feedback, okay? Um, that's how we all get better together. Uh, in, in next, we have that swing guide that we talked about. If you guys do want the swing guide, if you don't already have it, some of you may have it. If you do want the swing guide, Go ahead and hit your chat button right now and, and just give a thumbs up or a yes or a why, and I'll make sure that I get that emailed off to you. Um, and then lastly, uh, if you feel so inclined to donate to this process, um, you, could, you could Venmo me directly, and I'll choose whether or not to share with Roger. Um, if you don't, that's cool too. No hard feelings. And I will also share nothing with Roger then. Um, but in the end, I want to say thank you guys from both of us that, that you guys took the time out of your day and, and, and got some heady stuff out of this. And we'll share the slides with you so you can relook through that stuff. If you took notes, great. If you don't, if you didn't, you know, it's all good. But I, I think there's some good takeaways here. Uh, I'm going to leave it one more time. If anybody has any questions, I'm going to unmute you guys because I don't want to sit here and chat these questions away. But 
if you have questions, unmute all. I was gonna say, I'll, I'll keep sharing it. I'll share it with my followers and let them know this is dope. We need this information. Yeah, I mean, sh share whatever you like. Uh, you know, we have some things planned in the future here. This is um, this is one of our first forays into uh, this this big time world of virtual, and I'm not a, I'm not afraid to share with you guys. I know most of you personally, so um, and like the only one I didn't know was Quinn, and he left. So screw him. I'm just kidding. In case he hears it, but uh, beyond that, that's all good. If you um, if you want to. Get the swing guide. Like I said, drop me that that chat mark. I saw some of them. If you if you don't want to put it in the chat, nobody else will see it unless you put it for everybody. Um, and if you want to Venmo, Venmo away. Uh, then you Jeremiah uh, Jeremiah you, Dash Whalen. So it's not. Okay. It's, see my name right there. Just put a dash in between uh -huh. it. That's me. It's okay. a cartoon character. So if it's anybody but a cartoon character emoji then that's not me. And they're going to be super happy that you gave them. Some <laughs> all right. But like I said, if you don't feel like it, don't do it. It's no, it's no worries. We're, in, we're all in the same boat here. So um, again, thank you, Roger. You have to any, anything you want to add? Um, just that the, the second part of this is going to be focused more on uh, hip mechanics and positioning, um, shifting the hips and your setup. So, you know, that's, that's one of the things I think people really struggle with the most is having power, uh, right out of the hip, uh, right out of the hike. And we're going to go over a little bit of setups, proper hip mechanics next time. So practice the stuff that we went over today. I, our, I saw improvements from the beginning to the end, um, you know, just, just by paying attention to timing and arm to body contact. Uh, but that's what we have going on next. So if you feel like you have questions about that, if you're not quite sure where to be, um, you know, you can feel free to email us questions ahead of time. Um, but, but certainly come with them next time because we'll get, we'll get as specific for you as, as we can, especially if the group is about this size. It's really easy to, um, it's really easy to do a, a, a presentation of a slightly different nature. Yeah, and, as, and if, you, if you read that swing guide, it'll cover some of that stuff as well. So then you'll, you'll, you'll kind of know a little bit more and we can get a little deeper, okay? All right, everybody. Good times. Thank you. Uh, this is where Good we play the you. outro music. Thank, Thank you. you all so very much. Yes. Remember, Bye. swing every day. You'll live every longer. Day. All right. Bye. 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 Bye.